Welcome to Talking Giants, presented by DraftKings and John Boy Media. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And guess what, Justin? What? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I don't know how to open champagne. I'm not a champagne guy, but I got a bottle of champagne. Come on. Shake it up. I'm really embarrassing myself here. I'm using a big flathead screwdriver. Where do we go? Come on. <laughs> and we got freaking Kenny Gold. Hey, boys take, and take girls. A big, take a big sip on camera. You got to take a big sip on camera. You got to say something. Take a big sip. Say something. Camera's on me. Something. Buy the Talking Giants cup. I'm about to put it in. Well, it's 6 o'clock on a Saturday. I won't be driving for the rest of the day. Welcome to Talking Giants. The Giants got Kenny Galladay. Justin, how are you? My hands are wet now. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't even know where to begin. You know, you, you always throw to me for these, you know, for some big picture thoughts. Celebration. Celebration kid at a candy store. It's worth store. celebration. It's, oh, yeah. it, this is a signing worth celebrating. Celebration yeah. kid, at a, kid at a pure candy store. I mean, this is... If there was one guy that was available in this free agent market, if there's one position that was going to, you know, we think that can really transform this team and make us better day one, it it was wide receiver and that guy was Kenny Galladay that was gonna that was gonna be available. And I think one of the arguments that I had during the regular season when we were asking, should we go wide receiver during the draft? Should we go wide receiver during free agency? And one of the arguments that I said, Bobby, is yes, like getting a wide receiver in the draft is fine, but we kind of need to ramp things up right now because of the fact that Jones is approaching the latter part of the second half of his rookie contract. Saquon's approaching the end of his rookie contract. So the fact that you can get a proven pretty damn good wide receiver in here for the New York football giants at a wide receiver that match like his strengths match exactly what we need. The fact that you can get somebody proven in here day one that, you know, can come in and rock and roll and not have to develop. That is huge it is game changing and it, it kind of is franchise altering in the best of ways it is it is man it, it this is a, this is the type of signing that makes everybody better and justin you know we look back at last year's offseason blake martinez great signing james bradbury amazing signing but i don't think james bradbury is worthy of celebrating this much you know like maybe no. that's a, a bad like this is a move if you're a giants fan to celebrate because of how much it affects everybody else because Daniel Jones and we said year three is a big year and this really this puts the pressure on Daniel Jones and you know we'll talk we're going to go through each player and how he affects it besides just the player Kenny Galladay is but Daniel Jones has never had the advantage that Kenny Galladay has had in his career I'm just going to assume he didn't have the best players at Charlotte Latin in high school at Duke he always had the worst players in the team on the other side Obviously, not every single game, but you don't get what I'm saying. He never had that advantage. He never had it. And this is the first time in Daniel Jones' career where he said, where he has the advantage, where he has the advantage. And we're going to go through his stats, but, you know, like I, I broke up these stats. In 2019, Kenny Galladay's, uh, you know, he played 16 games that year. The last eight games, his QBs were David Blau and Jeff Driscoll. Well, guess what? In those eight games, you have 30 catches, 682 yards, five touchdowns. Okay. So he is the type of player where a QB doesn't have to be perfect. And that was one of the things that sucked about this past year is like Daniel Jones has to be perfect for this yep. offense to succeed. And now we're in a situation where, you know what? He doesn't have to be perfect. And guess what? It makes it easier on every, literally everyone else on this team. Yeah. Um, you know, to kind of just put it, put in a little bit of a vacuum. I mean, Kenny Galladay is going to do a lot more for this team rather than just go up and catch deep balls. Right. He is the, um, unquestionably the number one wide receiver on this team. But really, if we're just looking, again, for the Giants offense from a vacuum, they needed more deep options. Because now there, there is, realistically, there is no excuse for them to be for them to not be more aggressive in 2021 and coming up this September, right? There's absolutely no excuse. And I know you know, we're not talking stats yet, but uh, Bobby, this is a stat that, that just blew my mind. It, it blew it blew. It blew legitimately blew my mind. So Daniel Jones in 2020 and on his deep ball passing attempts from 20 plus yards, air yards, 652 yards. I want you to guess in 2019, how many deep passing yards or deep receiving yards Kenny Galladay had in 2019. 
from 20 plus yards. 592? No, 628. So do the math, Bobby. This is, remember, this is a quarterback. A quarterback had 652 deep passing yards when he was throwing to how many different receivers with how many passing attempts. Kenny Galladay had 628. Uh, Kenny Galladay had 16 catches from 20 plus yards. Daniel Jones had 20 completions. Daniel Jones had 43 attempts. Uh, Kenny Galladay had 36 attempts, deep attempts going his way. Daniel Jones had six touchdowns from 20 plus yards in 2020 and 2019. Kenny Galladay had five touchdowns, Bobby, Kenny Galladay, single-handedly one person, one man by himself in 2019, basically put up the same deep ball numbers that Daniel Jones had as a quarterback. That's unreal. When you you showed me those numbers yesterday, Justin, I was like, oh my, it, it this truly is a match made in heaven. It's not simply just Kenny Galladay is a really good player. We want good players on our team. It's because he is just a perfect fit. He is a perfect fit for every single player on this team. Every single player, even for the coach. Because, you know, me and you aren't big fans of Garrett, but we'll talk about it with Garrett later. It's like, look at when he's been good and look at the one thing he's had. He's had good players, but it's always been... The good years between the bad years have been wide receiver one. All right, let's but let's talk about who Kenny Galladay is, Justin. Um, and they signed him in a four-year, seventy-two mil. We'll talk about that in the and the the Giants meeting with him and everything. Six foot four, two hundred fourteen pounds, the big play machine. Twenty-seven years old, so we got him locked up until he's thirty-one. I feel like that's right around when you want to have a wide receiver too. This past year, he, had, he played five games, had the hip injury. Uh, you know, the Giants obviously checked all that out. Twenty catches, three hundred thirty-eight yards, two touchdowns, sixteen point nine yards per catch. 62 percent catch rate in 2019 when he played all 16 games 65 catches 1190 yards 11 touchdowns 18 yards per catch and then the year before when he played 15 games 70 catches 1063 yards and five touchdowns justin i want to like like i i brought up that number of you know the, the the eight games with david blau and jeff driscoll in those eight games with david blau and jeff driscoll as his qb justin well he had 69 yards less than Darius Slayton had this past season in all 16 games. In all 16 games. So what he did with eight games with those two QBs was 69 yards left than Slayton in 16 games. And then you look at uh, Sterling Shepard's 2020. He played 12. He only played 12 games. Well, he had 26 uh, less yards than what Galladay put up with those two QBs. He is far and away the best guy in this team and you don't need perfect QB play. And we've talked about it a, a few times the past couple of weeks. Matthew Stafford was not some perfect QB. He was totally screwed in Detroit. He was a good QB, but he wasn't perfect. So I, I just, with Daniel Jones, deep ball ability, I just think this is such a, a match made in heaven. Yeah, Bobby, some more advanced numbers that I have. Average depth of target was 15.4 yards in 2019. Uh, five yards after the catch per reception in 2019. And again, you know, we talked about this with John Ross. It was, it's so impressive to see that he got over five yards per catch per reception with such a deep depth of target. Um, 52 first downs on 65 catches. He is a chain mover 30. Uh, so this is, this is really even crazy too. 39.3 yards per catch when he has targeted 20 plus yards down the field in 2019. So it wasn't even like you're targeted 20 plus yards down the field. And maybe you averaged like 25, 30 yards catch. Uh, it was 39. So Bob, I mean, 40 <laughs> yards, 40, 40 yards per, per deep target or per deep. Um, yeah, no, per deep catch. Excuse me. That change. You were changing the script of the drive. You were, you were flipping the script from going from the 20 yard line to midfield, uh, midfield to the red zone. I mean, that completely just changes. It changes a game. It changes the game and 50% catch rate when targeted 10 plus yards in 2019. You're muted, my friend. The NFL is one on big plays on offense. You listen yep. to the best offensive minds in the NFL and they all say, if you're a team that can get five, six yards and do it consistently, cool. But that is rare. The way you win the NFL is by big plays. Big plays. Now we have the QB who can throw that ball, and we got the wide who can catch that ball, and it makes every literally everybody better. Um, so it's it just it does transform this offense. I mean, this the heat is on for Jason Garrett and Daniel Jones because you got the guys now. Um, we'll talk about the line a little bit later, but 
this is uh he he changes his team in so many ways man like we'll we'll go through the let's let's talk about the players because we're talking about him as a player and i don't feel like talking about you know judge meeting with him and and how the giants vetted him let's go through it player by player now we've talked about with daniel jones but again he has the advantage he's never had daniel jones deep ball passing in 2020 had the best rating at it 20 for 40 50 percent 652 yards 16.3 yards per attempt six touchdowns zero interceptions the best rating doing it he had this you know Deshaun Watson had the highest completion percentage at 52%. Jones had 50%. Now, let's talk about Darius Slayton. I think Darius Slayton one is One more point two. on Daniel Jones. Can I give one more point on Jones? Of course you can, baby. So here, here's the big comparison, right? Because ideally, what do we want Daniel Jones to maybe kind of turn into in year three? You know, a guy that necessarily didn't have the year two jump like we want, but a guy that did have a year three jump was Josh Allen. What did the Buffalo Bills go out and do for Josh Allen in, in, in the offseason of year two going into year three? They gave him Stefan Diggs, and the Giants did it. So in terms of you talking about Jones, you know, the, the excuse, you know we've been accused of giving a lot of excuses for Daniel Jones this past year. The excuses are ultimately running out. Um, and when and the Giants we've go been out, asking for. That's right. what we have been asking for. We, I understand Garrett is still here. Um, which, you know, we're not going to you know do a party people on who Garrett is, but I do think this makes Garrett better. Um, and let's, since Jones and, you know what, the QB and the offensive coordinator are usually attached to the hip. Let's, let's go to the offensive coordinator next. Jason Garrett, we still aren't fans of his, you know, but when Jason Garrett has had the right pieces, his offenses have done well. Now you do have content, like continuity is overrated, Justin, but it's not nothing, you know. When because you know, we we would always say, like, the, if your only reason to keep Jason Garrett is continuity, then you shouldn't keep Jason Garrett. But it is something, it is something, and we did we did see Daniel Jones improve in the system as the year went along. Look at Jason Garrett when his Cowboys teams were good, when Des Bryant showed up, when Tara Lowe's was there, when when um, you know, remember how bad they were struggling, struggling, and then they traded for Amari Cooper and they got better yep. that year, like by a bit, like a big margin. Um, that number one wide receiver is important for Garrett because I do, I do think he viewed, I know we talked about like, you know, forming deep concepts and stuff. And I still disagree with hundred percent. Well, guess what? Now you got the guys to do it. Now you have the guys to do it. You have Kenny Galladay that, that you put, now you got Slayton. Slayton doesn't have that cornerback one treatment. Um, so this, you know, we're talking about the excuses being out for um, Daniel Jones. They're even out more so than Jason Garrett. Cause now you've got the pieces to, you know, quote unquote, be aggressive. Yeah, Kenny Galladay had a contested catch rate of 76.9% um, in 2019, I believe, if I am correct. I'm just going to say because I made a graphic about it, but I wasn't clear about what year it was. And that's what this Jason Garrett offense does rely on. It, it relies on the contested catches. It's not necessarily going to be scheming guys open down the field, which is why Des Bryant, you know, you look at, you know, a lot of people think of Des Bryant as a dominant, physically dominant wide receiver. It's because he had to be a physically dominant wide receiver because he had to win those jump balls. He had to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. Kenny Galladay, that is that, like, let's Bobby, let's be real. Kenny Galladay hasn't necessarily uh, made his money with the Giants because he's been a consistent player because he's played 16 games every single year of his career. He's made his money because he is a contested catch king. He is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL at going up and getting those contested balls, and that is exactly what they mean need, and that's exactly why he is the perfect fit. So good for Jones. I'm sorry I interrupted you on going off about some other players. No, no, you are good. Um Let's talk about Slayton next, because I do think Slayton is the number two player that helps outside of Daniel Jones. He no longer gets cornerback one treatment, okay? And he doesn't have the safety help over top. Those are two things that were kept Slayton from go like having not like, you know, we, I don't think we expected Slayton to be corner wide receiver one, but we're like, could he be, you know? Um, well, now he doesn't have to be. Now he just has to be the outside wide receiver on the opposite side. Jones, Jones and him have a connection going down the field. They do, you know, going back to their rookie year. And even, you know, the, the little bit of success the Giants had going down the field in 2020 was usually at the hands of Darius Slayton. Um, he's a guy who averages 15 yards per catch, too. He's a big play type wide receiver. Uh, I really do think this makes it so much easier. Like the cornerback two treatment one is just huge. It's huge. We get this, you know, maybe we could taste what, uh, you know, Slayton did for us as a rookie. And not having the safety help over the top, 
I mean, I really do think there's going to be some plays where we truly are an Eric Coriel offense. Like Jason Garrett's supposed to be Eric Coriel guy. We didn't see a ton of it. Well, now it's like, hey, Daniel Jones, you got two guys on the outside, Slayton and Galladay. They're running go balls. You got a, you got a safety in the middle of the field. You see where he goes. Look the other way. If you want to go, go. If not, get back down in your progressions. Look at the tight end. Look at Shepard. See if you need to check down to the running back. And that just simplifies the game for Jones, but it also – it gives Slayton that advantage. Yep. Because guess what? Guess who's going to get the safety help? So if Jones go, bam, look, I got help over the top. I don't need the forces in this situation. Look, Slayton's got a step. Go. Go. Throw it to him. And it also allows, you know, Slayton – it's, you know, pretty decent work in the intermediate game too. Um, so it allows him to do that type of stuff too. Yeah, I, I can't help but agree. And I think the the most powerful point is here, you know, Darius Slayton was the biggest, most threatening option for the big play in 2020, which is nothing great and nothing to really celebrate about. So the fact that he will not be getting that cornerback one attention, like you said, Bobby, that that is huge. That is huge for how he's able to produce. It's going to be big for how it's big for his value. I think, you know, he's obviously just much more valuable as a wide receiver to a wide receiver three versus a wide receiver one, because we were relying on him. And, you know, we, we were asking ourselves, is he hurt? Which I still think he was hurt from during the regular season. His, he had ankle issues, but it, you know, is he good? We were questioning maybe even effort sometimes. So this obviously inevitably does help him out a ton, which is awesome. We'll not be getting that cornerback one attention. Shepard. He's going to play full-time slot. Now we, we talked about in our wide receiver review, how, you know, the idea that Shep is only a slot guy isn't true, but I do feel a lot more comfortable with having two guys who I know are outside receivers. And now Shep is in the slot, you know, like it's, you know, and I put this tweet out, we went from our deep contested guy who made like the crazy contested plays being golden Tate to Kenny Galladay. And also just the upgrade as that is to where functionally as an offense, you run. Now we don't, we're not going to our slot position for that area, you know? Um, and I had something, you know, me and you argued about Tate a lot, but it's like, hey, I like what he did with those deep concepts, but we also don't want that being what our slot receiver does. Now our slot receiver is someone who can get some decent separation, who can run the whole route tree, who can be that safety blanket for Daniel Jones. And that's coming from the slot position. And that's what you want your slot receiver to be. Right. And I heard, and obviously stats don't deny that Sterling Shepard was just as productive, if not slightly more productive on the outside versus the slot. But thinking about his role, you know, Sterling Shepard as an outside wide receiver still wasn't a guy that was going to, you know, move the chains. And like we said with Kenny Galladay, he wasn't going to flip the script of a game from going from the 20 yard line to midfield or the midfield to the, to the red zone. Like that, that was never Sterling Shepard the way that I've complimented Sterling Shepard and I love Sterling Shepard's role as the security blanket. You know, if it's a third and five, he's going to get you six, seven yards and he's going to move the chains. Still think Sterling Shepard is our, you know, it's the giants best route runner. I'm not, I don't, I'm not hundred percent certain how good of a route runner Galde is. If he's, you know, if he's great, if he's elite, but Shepard is going to be that intermediate target that the giants need. And he's there for Daniel Jones to have. He's already showed a great relationship um, with Jones in that and that facet with having a high catch rate. You know, I don't think Darius Slayton and Kenny Galladay are going to have a catch rate that's much much over or higher than sixty percent. That's not their game. Sterling Shepard's game, at least when Daniel Jones came in as quarterback, his game was having a catch rate of seventy percent plus. Like Bobby, what was his catch rate with Jones this year with Jones as quarterback? Was it not 79%. like seventy nine percent? It was eighty percent, which is absolutely bananas. So. I love Shepard in the role of the slot wide receiver because what you want your slot wide receiver to be, you want him to be the security blanket. You don't want him having a very high average depth of target and you want him to be that security blanket. I think I might've said security blanket twice. Security blanket, baby. I'm about to go buy a security blanket. Okay. Saquon. While I pour something in my great talking giants mug, check it out on the John Boyd media store and also buy the Kenny Galladay shirts. How about that? Oh, Links are in the description. Um, <clears throat> Saquon. One, just the easy answer, Justin. Run an eight-man box versus us. Do it. Do it. And, and we're going we're gonna to throw the ball deep. But guess what? Now if we don't and teams do respect us, well, guess what? Saquon doesn't have the stack boxes as much. He's still going to get them, but he's not going to have them as much. And also, 
from a mindset point, you know, like, hey, Saquon, we want you to make big plays. That's what separates you from other running backs in the league. But also, we don't need you to. We don't need you to be the guy who gets us the 60, 70 yard touchdown, the 40, 50 yard play. Let those, like, telling you, like, let those things happen to you naturally. Let us hit your gap, read, go through the hole. And if it opens up, it opens up. But we don't want you to be the guy that's trying to turn something out of nothing all the time. Turn nothing into three, four yards and turn four or five yards into big plays. Yep. I feel like that should be the what these coaching staff should be beating in to Saquon's head. And and now you can point. Like, that guy's going to get you down there. That guy's going to get you down there too. It's not all on you. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, real. That's yeah. Athletes' minds – like that's real. Like that's 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 where numbers and analytics can't explain that. Where the coaching staff could be like, "Hey, dude, change the way you do this because we don't need you to do it anymore." Where before, like in 2018, they needed it. They needed it from Saquon in and that's in 2018. Yeah, because there was just no other option. Well, they had, I mean, they had Odell, but it's like they needed it more. Right. Well, yeah. And then, sorry, you know, 2019. You, excuse me. Eli Manning and his overall approach of you know go maybe going downfield, taking some chances that was very limited. Very. Yeah, um, that's true. So, yeah, this is huge. This is I, I especially look at it from the fact that again, you this is the first point that you said stacking the boxes. And I, I hate that we're just repeating the, the same points. But Wayne Gallman faced uh, an eight man box, an eight man box, forty two percent of his carries in 2020. And he was still productive. He was still like very productive because he was an efficient running back. You know, what concern is, is that if defenses still want to stack the box against Saquon, which I, I still think defenses have to be because Saquon is that dangerous, right? If they still want to do that, can Saquon have that mental change of, I sometimes just need to take what is in front of me versus I'm going to go for the big play every time because we, you know, what you don't want in the running game consistently is just negative or plays that net nothing. Um, so hopefully with this signing and, you know, with their preparation and camp and OTAs, you know, what, you know, what he can do is I'm just going to take what is in front of me. I'm going to become a more efficient running back, keep the drive going because he's not the only big play option on this offense anymore. Yep. All right. So since I've been covering all the topics, because I'm just so, I'm so freaking and, uh, and I know. I, I mean, I, I, I was gonna give Decided. myself. I was gonna give myself a compliment, and I was like, you know what? It's gonna sound douche if I give the compliment. Since I've been going off first, Justin, how do you think this benefits the offensive line? I would say Evan Ingram, but I think he's the one who benefits the least from all this. Um, well, so I mean, let... how how it benefits the offensive line? I'm sorry, I interrupt you. How it how it off benefits the offensive line? You know, the Giants. I've been saying it. I've been saying it the last couple of weeks. The Giants offense and Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones was the highest blitz quarterback in the national football league. He was blitzed at the highest rate. He was blitzed at one of the most in, even in general, even when he missed a couple games. So if the giants offensive line is not being blitzed as heavily, then it means that there's less guys that they have to block. It's less that they have to account for. And it, it's just much more manageable versus six, seven guys constantly screaming down your throats and you, and you have to account for everybody. So if there's more, if you have safeties that can play back, less guys in the box, that will help everyone. But honestly, Bobby, if I had to make an argument for who it, who Kenny Galladay helps the most, I honestly think it does help the offensive line besides Daniel Jones. Right. That, that's a good point. I, and I wanted to let you go first because I was going to say the th same thing. We're going to be blitzed less. I, we, we, we will not be the most blitzed team in the NFL. Now we have Kenny Galladay because teams are going to be forced to respect that over the top. And guess what? If you blitz us and you play the one safety high over the top on Kenny Galladay, well, now we're going to be able to go to Shepard and Slayton. Now we're going to be able to go to those cats. And now ironically we're going to throw enough, swing Bobby, pass to Saquon Barkley. Ironically enough, the games in which Daniel Jones was most productive in 2020, it was the games where he was releasing the ball in like two and a half seconds, 2.6 seconds, which was below average for him. I think there was even a game where his average time to throw was like 2.4 seconds. And in some of those games, Cincinnati, the second Philadelphia game, even the first Philadelphia game, in some of those games, that's when he was throwing the ball the deepest. He was getting rid of the ball quickly, and he was throwing it deep because teams were just coming after, coming after, coming after. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I'm just going to – you know, Daniel Jones is a touch ball thrower. I'm just going to give good touch on the ball, and my guy can come down with it. So, yeah. Tight end, Evan Ingram, Kyle Rudolph. I don't think this helps them a ton. I think what would help Ingram a ton more 
is being used horizontally and not like Jason Witten. So I still do think Evan Ingram and just Ingram catch the damn ball. But anyway, the tight end position, you could pit Rudolph in more of that Witten role, but Ingram using him horizontally and drags, you know, um, corner route, stuff like that, instead of using him as, you know, that traditional tight end. So I, I don't think Galladay changes Evan Ingram a ton. I think Jason Garrett and Evan Ingram catching the ball is what will give more success to Evan Ingram. Well, it changes Evan Ingram, and we talked about this with the Kyle Rudolph signing, but what, what changes with Evan Ingram is now with Kenny Galladay, Evan Ingram is the number three option on the roster in terms of catching the deep ball, and that's yeah. not a place where he wants to be. He is arguably the second best tight end, like pure tight end on the roster, because I think uh, Kyle Rudolph is a more diverse and more complete tight end, and now he is looking at being the third best deep option on the team. That's not a place where you want to be, which is further evidence that Evan Ingram may be traded to alleviate that $6 million cap hit. Cap hit. Do the Giants maybe want to go after uh, that free agent uh, cornerback from Tennessee that's already visited the building? They're going to have to probably restructure some contracts and they're going to have to make some room. And Evan Ingram seems like a no-brain answer to just $6 million comes off the books and we don't even have to worry about anything against the cap. So um, it's unfortunate because in a way, Bobby, Having Evan Ingram on an offense where we don't feel like we need to rely on him, that's kind of fun. It's like, oh, do, I, I don't want to force feed the ball to Evan Ingram. I just want to give him give him the ball whenever you know he's open or whenever whenever it's ideal. Because we were force feeding the ball to him last year because we just, you know, we didn't really feel like we had a lot of other weapons and it hurt the offense. So bad, sticky situation. But I feel like it's a good problem. Yes, it is a good problem. Justin, even if nobody got me, John Ross got me. Can I get a John Ross? Somebody made that meme the other night when I was up at like three in the morning doing film and uploading it, and that, that made me laugh. Um, it's a reference I don't understand. Yeah, it was a meme that one of our listeners made, and I thought it was like, even if nobody got me, John Ross got me. Can I get a John Ross? It's just they replaced God and Amen with John Ross. Oh. Uh, amen. <laughs> deep threat. I mean, listen, we don't have a ton of expectations for John Ross, but you got two guys. One guy's going to go up and get it. The other guy is going to run past you. I have a, I have a sneaky scary. suspicion. When those two sneaky... guys are on the field, it, 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 it will be a bit of a threat for defenses, even though we don't have the highest expectations for the kid. I have a bad brain take. <sighs> Darius Slayton becomes expendable in a possible trade package with Evan Ingram because we have John Ross. No, don't. That's, I think that, I don't think that's, don't put those expectations on John Ross. I'm telling you. I John know. Ross is a nice thing to have as depth. Do not put real expectations for John Ross. One, he's not consistent. He's injured. And his drops are insane. I am not putting – if anything, just say that for pick 11, which we'll talk about in a bit. Got it. All right, Justin, next. Austin Mack nah, – no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> how does this help Austin Mack? Uh, no. So let's talk about the process. This was a wild three days of this meeting – like meetings used to happen more often. Now they're not happening as much, but this was a very crazy process from, you know, the meeting with him, physicals, Jabril Peppers having dinner with him. But this was a very weird and long process to bring Kenny Galladay in. Yeah. I, I, Bobby, I feel like it was, was it not longer than three days? Cause I feel like he was, there was rumor to be interest and Wednesday he, they were talking. Yeah. Thursday he showed, or no, Wednesday they were talking Thursday. They were talking about like setting up the meeting. And then Friday, the meeting was set, and then Saturday, it happened. Yeah, but still, the, the, the Galladay to the Giants has been rumored for pretty much the entire week, the first week of unrestricted free agency. So this, I almost feel like this process and getting Galladay here, the nearly 48-hour visit that was, I, I said the words unprecedented on Twitter, but then I was corrected that, you know, may, it kind of is unprecedented, but at least within the last 10 years. I, I guess these free agency visits where they were such a long time were more common maybe 10 years ago. So don't kill me when I say it's unprecedented, like it's never happened before. But at least within the last decade, from what I've been told, this doesn't happen, or at least doesn't happen for the Giants, where the Giants were able to do their due diligence of bringing a player in Jabril Peppers had dinner with him last night or Friday night. Um, this is rare. And this is not just any Joe Schmo that's looking for a job. Kenny Galladay was the top wide receiver on the free agent market. 
and the Giants were able to figure out exactly what happened in Detroit. You know, with Matt Patricia, you know, we all know Matt Patricia is an, is an ass, but you know, Joe Judge does have connections with him, and he knows you know, he maybe knew something was up if something went wrong in Detroit towards the end of Matt Patricia's tenure. Okay, he got to talk. They got to talk to other teammates. Obviously, yeah. obviously, sure, they had um, a the ge- general, the general. Yes, the general um, is uh, what's what's the guy's name that we just uh, that we just hired from Detroit front Kyle office O'Brien. guy, Kyle O'Brien. He's the one you know, who was part of drafting him. He was the guy who was um, part of Reggie drafting Reggie Ragland, you know, the general. Um, and again, supposedly they were he was talking to former teammates with his on the Lions. Um, that could but be this is that rare. might be Jamie Col- Jamie Collins. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, offensive. I mean, hell, maybe even called Golden Tate for 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 fun. I don't know, but oh, anyways, they vet. Again, like you said, it's crazy to where this guy is the top target and we brought him in not to whine and dine him to be like, what are you about, dude? Do you fit this? And that's why the four-year, $72 million, $40 million guaranteed contract makes me feel good. And I also, to quote Jerry Jones, anytime I did something worth uh, that I was happy with, I overpaid for it. Now, yeah. you don't say that when you're signing Dak Prescott to be your franchise QB, you maniac Jerry Jones. But what he's saying was true. Yeah, and Bobby, is it right right now? I don't worry about the money. I'm celebrating that that we just got him. I mean, that's just the fan in me. That goes up, baby. But all, that's what I was about to say. I mean, we talked about a couple shows ago about the biggest mega TV deal in history was just signed, and you know all the different internet revenue streams are going to be coming in with Amazon Prime. Um, they should be doing something with Twitch. Remember they were remember they were streaming like Thursday Night Football on Twitch. That that hopefully maybe should be included and should be incorporated. But ten billion dollar contract, media That's contract, TV, TV contract, um, Direct TV sucks. Goodbye, Direct TV. Um, Kenny Galladay on Daniel Jones. I want to grow with him. He's currently meeting with the media as we record. Who? Kenny Galladay. Oh well, I don't know if we would have any reactions to that. No, he's not going to say. We'll 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 do it. We'll, that's not something we need to talk about on the podcast. Monday night. Um. Rare. This is so rare. And Urban Meyer actually talked about this. You know, he's the brand new Jacksonville Jaguars coach. He talked about heading Who? into this free agency. Urban Meyer. Who is that? Good question. Um, he talked about how the NFL free agency is is a lot more is stranger and it's a lot more, I guess, difficult for him. Sucks to be you versus college recruitment because you really did get to know your your college recruits, guys that you were going to offer a scholarship. You got to know them like the back of your hand versus NFL free agents. You didn't really get to know them that well before maybe you tossed a bag at them. And Bobby, I hate to be just maybe an ignorant Giants fan, but I know everybody's saying it, everybody's singing it. Is this not a Joe Judge effect? I mean, Albert Breer put it out that he's very detailed on who he wants to bring in. And they did as much due diligence as you probably could with a top top, uh, NFL free agent. You can do this stuff with the million, $2 million guys. Like you said, it's very rare that this come where this happens, where the top guy, and this is why, you know, on Friday, a bunch of talking heads decided to start saying stupid points. But like, do people act like he's Randy Moss? He's not. It's like a guy doesn't have to be Randy Moss to change your offense and be an awesome player. Okay, like shut up, dummy. And then another guy being like, NFL free agency where they're courting LeBron James, uh, courting Kenny Galladay like he's LeBron James. Like, do you not realize what they're doing, you dummy? Yeah. Man. Like he's LeBron. LeBron James got didn't have to go and meet with the team and do a physical and sell himself. LeBron James could have went wherever he wanted in the first 15 seconds of free agency with a max offer. You dummy. Okay. They brought him in doing due diligence. Okay. Because the, the giants could offer this same contract on Wednesday without bringing him in. And he would have signed you dumb idiot. Anyway, sorry. How about Jabril peppers? Do you think the giants repay Jabril peppers, efforts with an extension? You saw Pep's already tweeting at a, at Adoree at Jackson. Yeah, be like you know what to do. Hey, Pep, I, I've always I always knew why he's one of my favorite players to watch. Is it because he's you know awesome? Plays are at hundred percent speed. He's versatile. He does it all. No, it's because he's recruiting players. That's why he's one of my favorite players to watch. But also all the other reasons. Awesome process, and and I will say, this week was a lot more fun for us as a. Uh, on the business side of things, Bobby, right? You know, this was a lot more of a fun and awesome week, both as a fan and on the business side of talking giants, because this did take the entire week. It made every single other move that the giants made this week, you know, from the questioning of Devonte Booker and Austin Johnson to the fun moves of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, bringing in Mike Glennon. We got him for nothing. 
and the general of, you know, we really like what he's going to bring to the table. John Ross, it made every single other move fun, more exciting to break down. It got a lot of people excited. Everyone was refreshing Twitter for five days straight, waiting for some more news, waiting for something to happen. And then this was a lot of, lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot, a lot of fun. You know what a funny video would be? Me doing like morphing, like Mike Glennon throwing a pass and then it morphing in the Kenny, like a Kenny Galladay catch. But like this late, this connection is about to be lethal. Mike Glennon to Kenny Galladay. Actually, I'm going to tweet that out right now. Let's see. But I know some people are going to be pissed off, but I don't care. They are. They're going to be very mad. Should I do it from the talking? You know what? I'm going to do it from the talking giants account. Yeah, that's that. The the, the philosophy to us breaking news. <laughs> yes, this is a look in our mind. Explain it, Justin. The, philo- the philosophy of sometimes of things that we don't want to tweet from our personal account, we'll just tweet it from the talking giants account. If we don't want like the backlash and the hate, we'll just tweet it out from the talking giants account. So if, you, <laughs> if like you're not see... checking the notifications on there, ton, yeah, no, and it's like, and it's not, it's not put onto one of our faces, you know, it's, it's a, it's a lot more fun. If you want to see something outland, if, or if you do see something outlandish from the talking giants account, know oh, that it's Danny there for Behan a reason. A nice tweet. I'm retweeting him. Oh, Danny Behan. Um, yes, that is Mike Lennon. Um, all right. So, I have Danny King contract. in the waiting have, room. We talked about, con- huh? I have Danny King in the waiting room. Let's let's hold off on Danny. Wait, give okay. us another five minutes, Danny. Tease. Pick number 11. I feel like this, you know, if, you know, my pre-free agency was like, hey, go get Jalen Waddle, or, you know, which, you know, which of the big three receivers fall to you. Right now, my head is saying either Ray Sean Slater or Kayla Farley. Where, where are you at right now? Oh, yeah, number 11. Here's my big brain picture. Big brain, big picture. Small brain, big picture. The Giants have went offense through the NFL draft a ton. A ton since 2018. 2017 was Evan Ingram, right? Yes. So including yeah. 2017. They've gone a ton, a ton, a ton offense. I think they're going heavy offense in free agency for a reason. And I think we may go defense with pick 11, whether that's Parsons, whether that's cornerback too. Now, if we get this guy from Tennessee, I mean, the Giants clearly just don't bring in anybody for a visit for no reason. You know, there's a chance that he could fall through the cracks, but if they get him, then I don't don't know what we do. (laughs) The Jackson from Tennessee. If they if they get this guy in, if they sign, oh, adore you! I thought you were talking about somebody in the draft. I was like, no, 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 no. If we no sign Tennessee this volunteers in the first round, I thought you were like making a connection between Jeremy Pruitt or something. No, no, no. If we sign this guy, Adoree Jackson from Tennessee, I mean that obviously does complicate my theory of we're going to go defense at eleven. Um, but, but I, I would really... like to do that and just take that off the board because, like, I don't want. I don't. We don't need cornerback two. To, like, it's it'd be awesome. But cornerback is a, is another position where it takes some time to grow. Um, yeah, and that's that's my that's my thing against going with cornerback, but that doesn't mean that you don't take a corner because the expectations that we had on DeAndre Baker are going to be a lot different than the expectations that we put on uh, a Farley or Patrick Sertain because yes. James Bradbury is going to be across from him, and we're going to have a reliable slot corner with good, good sa- with good safety help and a good coach. So that's why now taking corner is like ooh, it's tempting, and also Micah Parsons or Caleb Farley, Mike uh, Patrick Sertain. Blake Martinez and James Bradbury are not going to be here forever. If they don't restructure them, Bobby, they're on a three-year contract. They have two years left. And you and your first-round pick, you get five years out of them. So that's also an argument of, you know, they didn't sign Bradbury and Martinez to five-year contracts. They were not the big, highly coveted free agent, you know, like a Kenny Galladay. They were signed for th- smart three-year deals. They could, be ex- they could be extended, which I'm kind of rooting for that. But if they're not, they're only here for two more years. Yeah. I would be tempted to go racial on Slater. I hate to essentially give up on a Matt Parrot type. Okay. So people threw this idea at me and I, I, I'll be honest. I probably, I probably like turned it down. Like I, I, I dismissed it and maybe I shouldn't have. What if you bring Slater in and you pull a Dallas and put him at guard like Zach Martin? Like, do you think about that? And you let him play guard? If it, it Okay, let me put it this way. Whatever they do, 
I don't know how much they trust Matt Pear. Our trust, our our level of you know knowledge of Matt Pear is so limited to what theirs is, you know, because they had them every day for practice where we just get to see the game reps. Um, it's just with everything else around on this offense, it would be weird to like put so much faith into Matt Pear. Yeah. Or what about just still going wide receiver? How about that? I would or tight end. Kyle Pitts, the, I, Kyle Pitts isn't going to fall, so I'm kind of putting Kyle Pitts out of my mind. At this point, Bobby, you know, especially, uh, and I hate I, again. I'm not. I'm not putting expectation. No, I'm not even going to say John Ross's name. Not even including his name in this conversation. I know John Ross got me. Man. Yeah, don't this put is, expectations on John Ross. No, please. this this is a good problem. If they do go wide receiver, let's just say with uh, with still the hole at the offensive line. Now, obviously, they can go guard round two, and we're feeling like, hey, we got a, we got a, we got Dickerson, we got one of the, you know, the, the guard from uh, Oklahoma. You know, we're feeling pretty good about that. Um, on the opposite side, this is deep with wide receivers in this class too, and you know, I know people because of this past year aren't super high on Slayton, but Slayton shouldn't be a guy that's fourth on the depth chart. Yeah, you know? it's a good problem. <laughs> yeah good problems <laughs> uh, yeah I, I don't know i mean again if you're filling holes and you see good players you have micah parsons could play that linebacker too even though i love micah parsons but i feel i just feel like some of he would dominate in that role but i just feel like with micah parsons man he can kill in the the blake role um but which also he would, he, which he would eventually do yeah that's true so, yeah, I mean, again, we have options, you know, when you're picking at 11 and not, you know, three or four or whatever, you know, you really do have a lot of ways you can go, you know, where when we're picking four, the conversation is offensive tackle Isaiah Simmons, what are you doing? You know, like right. we, we really do. You could go wide receiver. If Pitts falls, you could go Pitts. You could go offensive line, you know, Slater, um, Farley. If there was an edge guy worth taking, you could, you know, that if the, if one of the edge guys – they really liked that would be cool. It's just no one is really high on this edge class. And I and I get that. Like I like Rousseau more than most people, but eleven's a little high. Pay I, I like Pay as a player, but I don't think he's a you pick him at eleven type player. So Edge Rusher from Georgia. I'm not huge on him. Um so if there were if there was an edge guy, you would be like, go get the edge, but it's just there's 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 not. So I don't know, man. There's a there's a lot of options. Draft month coming up. Draft month coming up. All right, bring Danny in. All right, Danny, I'm letting you in. Get Audacity going. Oh, uh, he probably doesn't have Audacity going. I texted he? him. Don't worry. Do you have Audacity running? I do. Yes. Cheers, Danny. I, oh God, I don't have a drink. Uh, cheers. Yes, I don't have a drink. What a time Get, to be alive. Speaking to the microphone, Dan. I don't have a drink. What a time to be alive. I know. It feels good, man. Um, congrats to the Giants. Any other people who deserve a congrats? Congrats to Danny King. Thank Yes, thank you. Congrats to uh, uh, Steve Tish. He probably was, you know, on FaceTime when this happened. He probably, yeah. he, Steve he probably Tish was probably found out when we found out. <laughs> he, Steve, Steve Tish was probably having a drink or two. It was like, all right, text Ian Rappaport and Justine Anderson and then uh, text Steve Tish. That was how it went. Um. Anybody else who like maybe hit a landmark or something that you can congratulate? Uh, do you say Kevin Abrams, Cap God? He's returned. I mean, I know he, who to congratulate. Who? So. Josina Anderson. She crushed. This. She's great at her job. I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm not a fan because, you know, when it, like she, like it's pretty much a fact that she pushes players to be problems in their locker room. But she's great at her job. I wish I could see her work, but uh. <laughs> Guess, joke, to make a guess, split jokes, joke, guess jokes aren't funny to some people anymore. Hey, yeah. teach um, their own. Anybody else that could deserve a freaking congratulations? I think Snacks deserves a congratulations. Oh, I got 10,000 followers. Give me the damn due, all right? I think Snacks deserves a congratulations because he's been saying this entire process that Kenny Galladay will 100% be a giant. I made a great Snacks meme. You did? It was very good. I actually oh, appreciate uh, it. I like to... Congratulate Marcus Marsher for providing me with some solid content for the past yes, few big days. Time. The, I know. Did you? I'm assuming you scheduled all those tweets, right? Uh, everyone besides the free 28 a.m. I did myself. 
Oh, free okay. 28 on my schedule. I was not getting out of a free 28 a.m. I hit 10k boys and I freaking won the contest. What's the prize? Yeah, I don't know, but I'm I, I'll probably tweet about it tomorrow since we're in Kenny Galladay world right now and be like, send me my money and see what happens. <laughs> Get the bonus 10k, big number. I know it feels good because you know you, you would just have like the 10k, yeah, like that, it, that it just looks clean. Yeah, it's clean. What sucks though is you can't see the exact amount. Um, but hey, we, we don't we don't do it for the followers. We do it for the engagement and the and the people and the friends that you make along the way. Oh, of course. So apparently, I saw Galde at a uh, press conference. He didn't seem that into it, but going had- on right now, I, oh. I don't think it's live streaming, so we're not missing much at the time. Um, oh, we forgot to start ask at the beginning. Leave a review. Happy times. Leave a freaking review, people. No, this is this is. At the end of a podcast is the worst times you could ask for a review, but leave a freaking review, people, and 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 talking giants versus the world. How about that? Talking giants versus the world. Exactly. Leave a review. Um, buy a shirt. Buy buy, a shirt. buy your friends a shirt. Buy your Detroit Lions fan friend a shirt. Buy an Eagle fan this shirt. Like, hey, remember? Did, did, weren't the Eagles like poking their toes into? Kenny Galladay for like a second, and then they, you know, probably realize that they're living a miserable existence and they can't pay for anybody. Buy them a shirt. Buy everyone a shirt. Buy yourself a shirt. You deserve it. I know. You deserve deserves to it. buy of our shirts that makes us money. Um, everyone deserves a shirt. No, give a Chicago Bears fan a shirt because they. I yeah, just know Kenny Galladay is going to is going to trademark uh, Kenny. Uh, you know, Ken NYG eventually. But until then, we're we're fully we're within free. our rights to do it. We're golden. <laughs> It was like we did like the Danny Dimes shirt. We had that out long before he trademarked it. Be honest. Maybe we should trademark it, even though that'd be the scumbag of the scummiest of scumbag things would be the trademark it. Kenny's that, own name. Yeah. Like there's people who do that, and it's such a scummy thing to do. So we'll we'll keep it up as long as as long as we're allowed within our legal rights. I know my rights. Those damn legal laws. Um did you see me pop the champagne, Danny? Uh, no, I, I, I did not. I could just go back and rewatch. I know I'm it. gonna get a lot of heat for the way I did that. Make oh. myself. I, I, I don't drink champagne. Honestly, I hate the taste of this. Like I, I did that first drink, and I've maybe like drank an inch worth of it since. It's, it, I don't like the taste of champagne. You just bought it just because it's a celebration. Yeah, it's a celebration. Um. So, That's, like, are we officially on the draft month now? Is that, like, a thing? Like, free agency, who cares about it anymore? It's well, all about draft the month. way months work is this one has, like, 10 more days, and then <laughs> it turns, the calendar will say April, and that will be draft wow. month. Wow, okay. Wow, violence coming from my neck. <laughs> I don't know. Draft month is April 1st. Draft month gets kicked off with my mock uh, my, my mock draft, and then April 2nd is our first episode where we, we'll be previewing the Edge class. Um, I do think we're going to get a couple of interviews in between here and draft month. Um Nick Filato, he 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 came on last year for a little like, hey, let's let's talk about five random prospects. So we might do that, and then there's one other guy we'd like to have on post free agency, but I'm not going to guarantee it. So, so um, beat writer, beat writer, not a player. Um, anything else we got, fellas? Buy a Danny shirt, King. talking Giants first the world. Leave a review. Anything we got, Danny King? You want to give like some thoughts? Uh, well, I, I remember there was a Talk of Giants episode sometime during the season that I, I remember we brought up the idea of Kenny Galladay. It was, a, it was a long time ago. I was like, I wouldn't mind Kenny Galladay. And then I remember thinking he would get a franchise tag and wake it up one morning being like, hey, everyone, Kenny Galladay is not going to be a New York Giant because he could be franchise tagged, being my annoying self. And here we are today. Kenny Galladay. I, 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 there was a part of me that was really fearing that we were getting Trevor Boward again. I hate bringing that up, but it g- gave me that vibe. <laughs> I was like, like if we get Trevor Boward, I I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do to myself. But Daniel Jones finally got that number one receiver. Dave Gelman, I mean uh, John Mara, Dave Gelman delivered their promise of giving the keys to Daniel Jones. There's no reason now for Daniel Jones not to go out there and prove everyone wrong, uh, unless huh. Jay, it, well, Jason, even Jason, it sounds like even Jason Garrett sold his vision. So if Jason Garrett is able to sell it to Kenny Galladay, I believe what Jason Garrett's doing now. Yeah, and this is where we talked about when Jason Garrett was hired. It's like he's had some good offenses. Now they're all due to really good players, but now we got some really good players. So let's let's make it happen now. Yes, I'll so. give a quote. Do you want me to give a quote? Give a quote from Zach Rosenblatt. Kenny Galladay said he was willing to go through the long process because Joe Judge and Jason Garrett 
Oh, yes. Yeah, sold him on their vision. And after that, it was a no brainer. No brainers, baby. No brainers. All right. That's it. We appreciate you guys. We will be back on Tuesday, will be our next episode. Um, the Giants won't be making a, a huge splash. You know, maybe they'll get a door Jackson, but Tuesday will be our next episode. Thank you so much, man. I, I love that we have our people with us in the Patreon for these types of episodes. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you then. Until then, let's go freaking Kenny Galladay and let's go big blue.